Hey everyone, welcome back to the Budget Sportsman and thank you so much for joining me on today's video. As you can see today, I'm outside with the budget boat. No, I'm not at the lake, I'm just in my yard behind the house. Um, but I got a brand new accessory for the budget boat that I'm really excited to install and to show you guys what it is, as well as tell you a little bit about my budget story. So the other day I was at Walmart shopping with my wife and while she was doing some grocery shopping, I went to the sporting goods section like I normally do, just to look around, but I also was uh, checking out some gear that I want to review on the channel down the road. But while I was there checking out some of that fishing gear, I happened to glance over and see that they had some fish finders on some very significant discounts. Now, I've wanted a fish finder in this boat for a long time. I've never had one before, I've never used one before, but even just for the simple fact of being able to tell how much uh, water depth they have below the boat, I've always wanted one. But I've looked at them, and even the budget-friendly uh, fish finder seemed like they start at $100 and up. So let me show you what I actually got, and I'll tell you what I paid for it. So I picked up this Hummingbird uh, Piranha Max 4 fish finder, and um, hopefully it'll focus there. The Piranha Max 4 fish finder. This is one of those budget-friendly fish finders, just normally about $100. But for me, I've just never been able to justify that expense for the amount of fishing that I actually do. But when I glanced over and saw a $42 price tag on this guy, I decided, you know what, that was a price that I figured I could go ahead, pick it up, and put it in the budget boat. So I'm really excited. Like I said, I don't know too much about this, and I've never actually used one before, but I'm excited to rip it out of the package, see what I, what I got here, and uh, install it in the boat, go to the lake, and try it out. So I'm really excited to get this installed, but I've got some planning to do. I've got to figure out exactly how I want to install this in the boat, where I want to put some switches so I can turn it off and on. And so I'm not going to get to that today. I just wanted to show you what I got. Um, but I will certainly check back in with you when I get into the installation process. Hey everyone, so it's been about a week or so since I showed you the budget fish finder that I picked up. And just today, I finally finished getting it all hooked up and installed the way I wanted. Now one of the things that getting the fish finder um, has caused me to do, or motivated me to do, is to put in an actual switch panel. It's going to have a voltage meter and that kind of thing. I've wanted to do it for a long time, just eh, wasn't really motivated to do it until I actually needed it because I had the fish finder. So uh, I want to show you uh, a little bit of how I have this all installed. And that's not really intended to be a how-to video, but I'll show you kind of how it's hooked up. And then actually this afternoon we're planning to go to the lake, so we'll take it out and I'll get to try it for the first time and I'll bring you along uh, to see what I think of it. My first time really ever using a fish finder. So uh, let's take a look at what we got in the boat. All right, let's start here at the back and let me show you how I have the transducer mounted. Uh, you can see that I have this black piece here. It's a piece of composite material. Uh, I didn't want to go out and buy starboard. That's the recommended marine grade material. Uh, but this is actually a piece of composite material that I've had stashed away from an old decking project for, from a composite deck. And so it, I think it's going to work out really well. And I use a high strength construction adhesive uh, to actually glue that onto the boat. Now, I'm not going to say for sure how long it's going to last or if it will even hold well. Um, but it was something I had available to me, thought I would give it a try. And it kept me from having to drill through the boat. And then, of course, I have the transducer mounted to that piece of composite material uh, using screws. Now, let's jump in the boat and I'll show you the exciting stuff. All right, so as you can see, I'm sitting in the back of the boat on the back seat, and this is uh, where I would sit to operate the boat with my motor, trolling motor, and everything. And now all of my electronics are right here. So what I did to make this little electronic station here is I got another piece of that same composite decking material, and I cut a shelf. Now, I didn't want to screw into the boat at all, so this seat actually has a lip right along here. You may be able to see it in the video. And I took another smaller piece of this composite material on both sides, drilled holes, put bolts down through it with wing nuts. So what that does is it actually clamps onto this lip. Now, if I try to pull on this really hard, I'm going to shake the whole boat. It's sitting on the trailer, and the camera's going to move. Um, but it's, it's, it's on there very solidly. Um, but if I need to do any work on the wiring behind it, or if I need to open the lid to this container, which I'll talk about in a minute, right now I can't because it's under this lip, I can loosen those wing nuts and slide this whole shelf out and get to any work that I need to do. Uh, this little box right here is an ammo box I picked up at Walmart in the sporting goods section for I think $4.88. And then I picked up this switch panel on Amazon for somewhere around $20 or $25. I really like this switch panel. It's got five switches on it. It's got what I would call a cigarette style, um, cigarette lighter style accessory, 12 volt accessory port, whatever you call that. Uh, it's got the voltage readout in the middle, and then on this side, it's got uh, a couple of USB ports. So it just adds a lot of functionality if I need to charge my phone um, or charge a GPS, anything like that. 
Now, you won't be able to see it, but on the back side of this little box, I uh, installed a master shutoff switch uh, that I just had laying around the house here. So that switch shuts off everything on this entire panel. It, it will shut off all the switches. It's kind of a master control. So you'll see if I flip back here and I flip that switch on, now my voltage readout comes on and I've got power to everything coming out of this box. Right now, if I try to turn my fish finder on, it won't turn on, but that's because I got to flip switch number one here and uh, that sends power to my hummingbird fish finder. Now, one thing I should mention here is right now, even though I've got five switches, that's the only thing that I've got on a switch. Um, however, it gives me the ability to, in the future, add other accessories that I've wanted to for a long time and just haven't gotten around to. Uh, I've talked about hunting out of this boat, which would mean I'd need to be traveling either early in the morning or late at night when it's dark. So I'd want to put some navigation lights on this boat. Uh, so now I've got plenty of switches to put navigation lights, anchor lights, maybe even uh, some bright LEDs for uh, dark situations, maybe even some interior lights. Uh, who knows what else? We could add a stereo in here if we ever wanted to. Probably won't do that in this boat, but now I just have a lot of options. There was one more thing I wanted to mention, and that is you'll see this GPS here. This fish finder is a very inexpensive fish finder. It does not have any GPS capabilities or any speed uh, reading, anything like that. And so I've actually been carrying my handheld GPS in the boat for a long time. It was something I already had, and I already had this mount as well, um, but I didn't really have a great place to mount the GPS. So in the process of doing that, I made this shelf big enough that I could put the fish finder and the GPS side by side, so I'll be able to have any navigation uh, features that I want on the GPS. I'll be able to see my speed readout and everything like that, as well as I see my fish finder at the exact same time. Uh, this is not wired in in any ways. It's running off of its own AA batteries, but if I did need to charge it, I could actually charge right here off the USB port. With all of that out of the way, let's head over to the lake. I'm super excited to finally give this fish finder a try, play with some of his features, and tell you what I actually think. Hey everyone, so we made it out here to the lake and so far I am really enjoying uh, playing with this new fish finder. Now, one thing I want to mention is this is not meant to be a comprehensive review, but I do want to give you a peek at what the fish finder actually looks like. But before I do, let me tell you kind of what my expectations were going into this and then how those expectations were met. Honestly, I was not expecting to come out here and catch a boatload full of fish just because I happen to have a fish finder in the boat, especially being new to fish finders. What I really wanted was something that would show me my depth and something that would show me uh, the water temperature and just at least give me an idea of what fish might be below me. Now, one thing about this you'll see in a minute is that it actually puts icons for fish where there is a mark on the fish finder that could potentially be a fish, which I think is really cool for a newbie like me. Now, I'm not convinced that every time it puts a fish icon up on screen that there's actually a fish down there, but it's a pretty cool frame of reference anyways. So anyways, with that being said, my expectations definitely have been met. It's really fun to at least know my depth, uh, find out that this lake is actually not as deep as I thought it was, and uh, at least see some marks down below. Now, I can't say I've been catching a ton of fish just because I have the fish finder, but I did catch a couple of halfway decent bass today. And uh, I think one possible reason why I at least caught the second bass was because I was trying to stay in an area where I saw a bunch of marks on the fish finder. Go ahead and take a look at that bass I just caught. We're out here trying the new fish finder, and it had nothing to do with me catching this fish, but we're having fun anyways. So anyways, I've been catching a few fish, having a good time. Let me give you a look at exactly what you're going to see on this hummingbird fish finder. Okay, so I'm out here just puttering around with the trolling motor, and you are going to notice some weird lines uh, kind of running this way probably in some of the video. Uh, that's just a weird artifact of trying to record another screen with the camera. Those are not actually on the fish finder. just want to point that out. Obviously, as you can see in the top left corner there, you see my depth, which I'm hovering right around 10, 11 feet, and then right below that is my temperature of 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, you can see right now I'm supposedly marking fish. One other thing I should point out is that on the top right hand corner you'll see zero and the bottom right hand corner is a 15. That's the current range and this is auto adjusting, at least that's the way I have it set up right now, is auto adjusting in range. So if I suddenly go beyond 15 feet, the hummingbird will readjust and it will change the scale from zero to 30. If I go beyond 30, it would automatically adjust, I believe from zero to 60. All right, what you can see here is that I dropped off and I actually dropped below 15 feet and so now it rescaled and you can see that it says 30 down in the bottom right hand corner and that's what happens when it automatically readjusts the scale uh, if you go over the depth of the original scale. And as you can see now it does say I'm marking fish down there at 10, 12 feet. 
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. As I mentioned before, this is not intended to be a comprehensive review of this Piranha Max 4 fish finder, especially coming from a guy who's never used one before. But I hope it at least gives you an idea if you're interested and you're in the market for one of these fish finders. More importantly, what this video is about to me is enjoying my hobby on a budget. I've wanted to do this for a long time, but I just didn't feel like it was appropriate to spend that amount of money for the amount of fishing that I actually get to do. And so because I was patient, because I waited, eventually I found a deal that was just too good to pass up and I was able to make that upgrade to the budget book. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And also, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving me a thumbs up or hitting that subscribe button. And until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.